Hi there everyone, welcome to the Hands Up For Trad afternoon show. It's been a busy week in Hands Up For Trad land. On Monday we announced the performers inducted into the Scottish Social Music Hall of Fame. Nominees include Johnny Cunningham, Margaret Stewart, The Old Blind Dogs, The Easy Club and many more. Read all about the inductees at halloffame.scot. Um, and also on Friday night, BBC Alba have a programme about all of the inductees for this year. So check that out if you're in the UK. I think that starts at 9pm. Uh, tomorrow, we Joy Dunlop is hosting uh, two more of our sponsors from the MG Alapa Scots Tribe Music Awards, the Salma Rostic and the University of the Highlands and Islands. And this Saturday... We have our big day of live music. It's called Trads Online. And starting at 1pm, we have nine bands performing live on our Hands Up For Trad Facebook and YouTube channels. It's all very exciting. Anyway, please tell us where you're watching from. And please welcome our guests, John McCusker, Mike McGoldrick, Jen Butterworth and Finlay Napier. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see nice you. To see you nice haircut. Thank you. Yes, well, we have a similar haircut, Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a little bit so side to cut there, mate. Yeah, you're looking, looking, looking good. Uh, John. Really over -haired. <laughs> Long may that continue, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, you uh, used to see. Uh, Johnny Cunningham quite regularly when you were in New York. I did. <clears throat> yeah, I used to see him. Well, he was living in Portland, Oregon, and uh, that was the very first time I ever met Johnny when I went out to play with the Battlefield Band uh, when I was, I suppose, 17 or 18. And I was a big fan. I'd never met him before. And uh, I remember turning up to the gig uh, in Portland and the promoter saying, Johnny Cunningham and Kevin Barker coming to the gig. I was like, wow, like two of my heroes. And Johnny did this amazing thing where, like, I was so young, like really tiny. And Alan Reed from the Battlefield Band said, and I saw them up the back, and I remember going, oh, God, they're both here, really nervous. <laughs> and Alan Reed said, uh, we're, you know, this young kid has just joined us. This is his first time to America. And we're going, please welcome, he's going to play a solo for you. Please welcome John McCusker. And I started introducing my solo, and Johnny Cunningham, like who I'd say I'd never met before, took Kevin Burke by the hand and walked him all the way down to the very front of the audience, and they sat in the second row, like right in front of me. And he kept, he was looking at me, and I was going, what's happening? And he kept on looking at me going, that's Kevin Burke. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my, that was the very first time I ever met him to do my solo. Right the whole scorecard's up like that, John, I go, two. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I suppose it sums, it sums Johnny up for me, you know, he's like a, such a hero, you know, like a stone. So, you know, I've listened to him since I was a kid. And I, I always thought whenever I met him and spent time in his company, his playing was was like how he was. It was full of cheek and full of, you know, like a brilliant soul for music. And yeah, I really, I loved every time, every single time I got to spend any time in his company. It was such a total treat. He was such a lovely guy as well. At the same time, he was really, really funny and mischievous. He was just nice. Exactly. That's what I mean about his playing where it was full, you know, I always thought like a cheeky way of playing and really fast sometimes, but like, what a soul for, you know, like playing slow airs or anything, really. Yeah, really, what a lovely man. Well, anyway, before we get chatting about everything else, um, we are going to watch a, a video that uh, of Chris Drever playing his, from his album Where the World is Thin that John played on this album. Don't know if he played on this track, did you, John? No, I played on another track. So could you play that one? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> this is a title track of the album Where the World is Thin. There's not enough room in the world 
To describe the distance I travel How many steps from your bed Before all these knots in my shoulders unravel You can buy affection for gold You can sell ideas for pounds and pence There's much that's certain in this world Love's not obliged to make much sense totally recommend it actually and there's even better tracks than that on it that feature the fiddle <laughs> i know i i loved hearing that what an amazing what a brilliant song and video yeah yeah the whole album's like that now i hope you like my christmas background we've got a bit of a candle Perfect. can you see it there it is the candle Perfect, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Good effort. Good effort, Simon. Thank you very much. So please uh, welcome uh, Fiddler John McCusker and flautist Mike McGoldrick. And this is a, an, a special night tonight, isn't it? This is the first night of your Christmas tour, John. It is. It's quite... Um, it's a special night and uh, quite bizarre at the same time where, you know, I was speaking to Mike today and he was saying we're at King's Place tonight in London, which is a beautiful venue where we've played many times, but the idea of being at King's Place tonight and now we're just sat in our own kitchens is truly <laughs> and utterly bizarre. <laughs> you know, yeah. Usually we would be in the van, you know, we'd be in Mike's car driving there. Now, I don't know about you, Mike, but I, I was looking at tour dates today and usually uh, it's just a sign of the times where, you, you know, you'd see the poster and we're in London, King's Place tonight, and then Inverness, Eden Court tomorrow. And usually yeah. that would give you the fear. That would mean Mike would have to drive. <laughs> seven, hours. Instead, seven hours. Seven hours. Just having a cup of tea. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the tour. Yeah, the tour starts tonight. And uh, we're excited about it. And uh, well, so, so how does it work, Mike? Well, the tour is a virtual tour. So we've pre-recorded the show. The show gets, um, it's, it's say there's, uh, there's 20 venues we're working with the venue, we're working with the promoters, so everyone, we're pulling together as, as, a, as a unit. The, the venue, say the King's Place or Eden Court or Nettlebed Folk Club or the Berry Met, they've emailed out everybody that normally is on their mailing list to say we're streaming a concert of Mike John and John, John Doyle, John McCusker. And then people log in, they buy a ticket, they get given an email, and then the, the uh, and a code, and then they, they come on at a certain time, and then they watch the concert live in the comfort of their own homes. But we've added an extra special little thing, as you know. We've done a Zoom interview for about half an hour afterwards, where it's an insight into what we've been doing and how we're feeling and how how everything's going. So there's it's pretty easy to do. You go onto my player, or you go onto the King's Place website, and you buy a ticket for tonight, or the, all the rest of the shows. You go on to myplayer.co.uk, Christmas at Home is the link, and 
there you go. Myplayer.uk you like that? forward slash Christmas at home. That was very well fancy. Well done, Simon. And well done, you. And, uh, and, and it's as simple as that. You book a ticket and they, they, they explain the rest. That's amazing, actually. And how many dates are there, John? I think there's maybe 19. I know they've just added Sterling Tolbooth now on uh, Boxing Day <clears throat> as an extra date. So there's 19, you know, like... Uh, London, Inverness, Aberdeen, Dundee, Peebles, Nettlebed. Then some festivals have joined together. Wems Fest, South Downs, Wickham, Selby, Saltair, Towersy, Otley, Warwick, Morecambe, Belfast, Dorset, Bury, Hebkelp, Benderlock and Stirling. So, like wow. Mike was saying, it's quite a, it's a brand new thing for us. I don't really know um, if other people have been doing this in terms of advertising it like you know it's advertised like a normal tour you know it's on all those different venues websites and it's support it's like anything simon i think for the whole year where we are having to uh, just get our heads around the idea of it you know i mean you know as well as being excited just figuring out how it all work but just John, any I, I, yeah I think, you know, the good thing about it is we're helping to support a local venue as well. So that we're not just like putting out a concert to stream and taking all the money. We're helping venues keep afloat. Yeah. We're also helping the promoters. We're helping the festivals. It's, it's you know, everyone's a winner, you know, working I together. I totally so, agree. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's, to that's right. It's totally right, Mike, in terms of a big part of this is the joint thing of coming yeah. together in terms of, you know, Obviously, as everybody knows, musicians, it's been a you know a tough year in terms of actually physically being able to go anywhere, but also tough for our agents, our managers, yeah. or say local promoters. You know, local you know people run the folk club local or the venues. Yeah, local thing. So it feels that does exactly as Mike says. It feels great where it feels like a real joint effort of everybody coming together to try and do what we used to do. You know. So what kind of material are you playing? Is it like an hour's worth of Silent Night, the real, the Strasby and the Jig? Pretty much, yeah. You've hit it <laughs> in one, nail, nail on the yeah. head. There. Exactly. Uh, a combination so, yeah. of, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've, we've worked out a few different uh, songs. John brought to the table like a medieval song and um, a song that was written by this one of the Sands family. Uh, it's material that we haven't played before, say 50-50. Some of our old favourites that we, we we would play at a venue, and then we've put in a, a feel for Christmas with certain hymns, uh, certain carols, a lovely piece by John uh, John Sheehan, the fiddle player from the Dubliners, called Christ Church. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's sixty minutes of <clears throat> material we don't normally play, you know, we, new new songs and new tunes, but it's not all Silent Night. <laughs> well, Silent Night works on the Ellen Pipes. Uh, it would be quite a good jig, actually. Oh, a good jig, yeah. Should we try it? <laughs> yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah, let us know yeah, how you I... got on with that, Simon. Yeah, that would work. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> won't work on the fiddle as well but it's nice on the flute yeah it's oh, really good it won't work on the fiddle nah. no, no. Like well, things. <laughs> shall, we, <laughs> shall we have we look at the christmas promo that you guys put out for it let's have a look at that now Great, actually. And I thought that just cut before Silent Night. <laughs> yeah, just in time. In fact, in fact, Simon, that set does start with Silent Night. <laughs> Brilliant. It really, yeah, it really does. Yeah. Did yeah. you have to bring your own Christmas lights for that? Yeah, it took me ages to uh, set that up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's just put the address on the screen again, myplayer.uk 
forward slash Christmas at home. And, uh, and of course, you can get it from the venue's websites as well. That's right, isn't it? Starting at, yeah. at London's King's Place tonight. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Now, John, um, you have the perfect Christmas present this year, don't you, for people to buy. You have a new book. I do. Very exciting, yeah. What's it <clears> called? <throat> it's called uh, John McCusker, The Collection, which I... Uh, stole from Phil Cunningham who had a book about 25 years ago called Phil Cunningham The Collection I thought that looks good I'll just steal that and if Phil being one of my friends I just told him to excuse me he was like yeah you can do whatever you want uh, so it's 101 tunes yeah of I suppose things from you know even things I composed before joining the Battlefield Band at 16 and all the way through to a tune I composed this year so yeah, it feels you know it feels good to I suppose get them together. It's one one of the maybe very few positive things about lockdown is that you know myself and Mike and John Doyle you know three good examples of finding other stuff to do that you normally wouldn't have time to do. So yeah, I did that, and I do know that my good friend uh, Michael McGoldrick has also got a tune book in the works, but sadly not available for Christmas. So Mike's going to sign no. of my book, which will be. A- <laughs> Yours has got a few of my tunes in it anyway, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it doesn't actually say your name, but I know that you... No, but it... Lots of them, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) What's your book called, Mike? I haven't put a title on it yet, but it might be called Volume 1, because I've got lots of tunes, so I'm thinking about a Volume 2 later on in the year. Mike, Mike, Mike McGoggett, the collection. I was thinking thinking (laughs) of Nick and John's idea, just, yeah. You don't mind, do you, John? I don't mind at all. Well, well he yeah, nicked yeah. Phil's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what's, going to be, what's going to be interesting is because we tour, like I say, you know, myself, Mike and John tour loads, you know, throughout the year. And I go out and sell, um, I go out and do merchandise. Usually at half time, we've all got our things. Mike drives for many hours, <laughs> most days. And then I go out and sell CDs and talk to folk. So it'll be interesting trying to find Mike's book under my book on the merchandise yeah. table. John's got a great, great way of selling the CDs. He just puts John Doyle CDs and my CDs underneath his CDs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, and then he brings vinyl and it takes up all the space. Yeah, just covers the merchandise yeah. table. And now he's got a book. <laughs> yeah. no room. We might as well just leave ours in the box, John. Eh? Well, just leave it under yeah. the table. Yeah. But mate, Good of course idea. you've got a new, you've got your CD that came out this year, or was it? That's, didn't come out. It's a twentieth anniversary. Out. 20th anniversary of Fused, and this summer we would have been playing, if you think, yeah, 20 years ago I brought that album Fused out, um, and with it being the 20th anniversary, we were going to play Lorient Festival and, you know, Tuna Festival and all the different ones, Denmark and Spain and Altogether. Um But now it's got a different ring, it's, it's Fused. It, it would have been rubbish. I know, just, <laughs> I'd rather be here in the kitchen <laughs> Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who wants to go to Denmark and France and Spain? <laughs> no, and when we can hang sit out in your... kitchens and talk, talk yeah, to Simon and hang Junior, out why would you want and... to go anywhere else? You know, <laughs> and... Simon, there is nowhere else we would rather be right now than here with you. <laughs> My wife says that too. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, one of the dates on your Christmas tour is Belfast, and I know that uh, that's a place that the the Doyle McCusker McGoldrick fans would like to see more of you uh, but this is a clip where the three of you were playing uh, in Belfast and the reason I kind of chose the clip apart from the reason that John's not really in it is, <laughs> is actually John Doyle's guitar playing in it is totally fantastic he's playing tunes in it and I totally loved it so let's uh, uh, Simon, Simon before you go you know you're the only presenter in the world that would actually start a clip by saying the reason I chose this was because <laughs> the guest isn't actually in it. Nobody it, else would get away with that. It's been a long year. <laughs> <laughs> Researching new ways to present. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-presenting. <laughs> Let's have a quick look at this anyway. <laughs>
Fantastic. <laughs> Editing. Good editing. Just right before I start to play. I don't know, John. I thought you were chopping in there was quite exemplary. Yeah, big part of it. Really big part of it. Do you know what? And like seriously, it's like it is amazing. Like when you look at your total mates, and even after all these years, like Chris Trevor, you know, singing earlier on from his record, or Mike and John, and you go, wow, they're really good. Even after all this time, yeah, that was amazing playing. Like really, it's like. Yeah, yeah Do- Doyle's playing is, is incredible. Do- Doyle's got that thing. He's got both techniques. He's got the, the flat picking tune playing, and then he's got the driving rhythm playing, and he just, you know, he, he underpins it. He's almost like a, you know, you've got a bass player and a drummer on stage when you've got, you play with John Doyle. He just has that drive all the time, you know. He never lays, he never sits back, John. He's always, it's all or nothing, you know. He's really, you know, he really goes for it. Yeah, amazing. Just, yeah. Right, guys. Well, thanks very much. We'll be back for the quiz very soon. I'm uh, just going to say hello to a few people uh, that are watching today. Uh, hi to Vincent from Cloudy Cool Leeds. Graham, uh, usually from Sunny King's Kettle. Philip from Foggy Norwich. Hi to Francis. Donald from Glen Farg. And Aileen from saying that the Tollbooth is a brilliant venue. That will be a great thing to watch the show. And Andy and from a gloomy belper. Looking forward to Saturday. Um, it's great. Keep telling us where you're um, watching from. And remember, there's a big quiz at the end of this. It's going to be really difficult. You know, you've got to beat the guys. But anyway, next up we have, as I said on in the intro, we have a brilliant weekend coming up. It's starting on Friday night. Uh, we have a Hall of Fame special at BBC Alba. And then 1pm on Saturday, we have Trads Online. And here today we have songwriter Finlay Napier and guitarist Jen <laughs> Butterworth. So join us who are integral to Saturday. How are you doing, guys? Very good. Cool. You look like a Christmas elf there with your Christmas background, Simon. Well, I try my best. <laughs> it's <clears throat> kind of a Christmas short. <laughs> so anyway, Finlay, you are the host on Saturday. What are you anticipating will happen? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'm hoping, actually, I need to talk to you about it because I'm hoping that I'll be able to have a feed where I can see what people are saying because I've found that with all this, these online things, one of the greatest things is when people send you wee messages on the, you know, like in the wee chat then. You can, you can see that at the moment, can't you? If you look oh. to your top right. No, I can. Oh, there's a button oh, you can I press. Can. Oh, yeah, there we go. Hi. So, exactly. Yeah, and that is... That is that is gold dust to the presenter. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, that, I've got my guitar. I'm putting new strings on it tomorrow so I can sing a song or two in between during the changeovers. Um, like the kind of, like a, like a tweener act. But I've realised there's quite a lot of acts, so I will actually have to bring a lot of songs. I'm going to sneak in a music stand. <laughs> don't know any songs off by art anymore because usually I'm just set up like this and I've got a monitor up here with the words in it and I can just, you know. I actually, like Finley, like, I watched one of your first live broadcasts on Facebook <coughs> and, and actually I loved it because you did keep forgetting the words. And uh, it, was a mess. it was real though. I really liked it. It was yeah. nice. <laughs> if everything went right, it would be... It would be pretty boring like when everything falls apart and like the dog. In fact, just before we came online, in fact, while John and, uh, and Mike were chatting there, I heard this very loud noise behind me and I've got a compressor on this mic and my dog's on the couch behind me and just farted very loudly and I had to sort of scramble to see if I was muted. But all of those kind of things. I want to take my dog with um, and, and Jen, you are performing twice. Yeah, it's kind of back to back to what feels like a bit more normal for a day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's exciting. I'm playing, so I've got a gig with Canaris, but I'm also playing with um, with Ryan in the afternoon as well. With me, so yeah, it'd be cool. That's good to get there. So there's two stages going on. There's a main stage uh, where Canaris are playing, and there's a carrier wave stage where you and Ryan are playing. And. Uh, tour. <laughs> and because of uh, 
uh, of lovely COVID. Uh, no one will be meeting each other. Everyone enters from a different door and <laughs> and no one's allowed to, to share any drinks of coffee. Or, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Really There's looking no forward hugging. to not having to lick everyone this year. <laughs> <laughs> so Let... tiring. That music award. <laughs> Let me tell you who's all playing then. So as I say, Finlay's hosting Kathleen McInnes and Mike Vass, Ian Yall, Ryan Young and Jen Butterworth, the Paul McKenna Band, Joy and Andrew, Dallahan, Adam Holmes, Canaris Quintet, and then after it all finished, because at nine o'clock, the trads, the TV programme with the results of the MG Alpha Scots Trad Music Awards are being announced, and there's lots of musical acts on that. Uh, Nightworks are playing a late night DJ set. DJ? Is that right? DJ set. It sounded strange when I said it there. <laughs> at 11 pm on YouTube. So that's going to be really exciting. Well, that'll be the sort of relaxing session. And uh, yeah, it's all watchable on uh, Hands Up For Trad Facebook and Hands Up For Trad YouTube. It's really, really good. <clears throat> so, anyway, I thought um, to get us in the mood for it, Jen, we could watch a clip of Canaris playing at Celtic Colours in 2019. Was that the first time Canaris Quintet had played there? Yeah, yeah, first time being over. Uh, I've been taking the students from the conservatoire over for about four years, but... Uh, first time with the band, and it was um, a good party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at it. <laughs> Stuff. Great music, Jen, and hopefully it'll all be sparkling like that on Saturday. <laughs> I tell you, I've been on the exercise bike trying to make sure that I've got enough leg muscles for stomping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could do with getting on my bike actually, just even to get my trousers to fit. Are <laughs> uh, you like one of those real news readers sat there in your pants? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Um, Jen, you've actually just released a new Christmas video. Did that come out yesterday? <laughs> yeah, it was just a wee bit of personal nudity. It's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Uh, is that uh, who wrote that song? It's a it's a darkness cover. Oh right, yes. Well, hopefully, we'll maybe show that at the start of the last afternoon show of the year next Wednesday. We'll get a bit of Jen. Oh, who's on it again? All the names have slipped me. Um, it's Sam Sweeney and Rob Harburn. Oh yeah, fantastic. And actually, I have to say, recommend all of your videos with the three of them. The three of you, they're totally, I love them all actually. Uh, Finlay, you have just started a new project, well announced a new project called Bird on a Wire with Boo Hewardine. What is it? It is, uh, currently it's a Creative Scotland funded project for um, any musician or poet or writer or screenwriter or actor um basically i hate the term but it's the easiest term to use any kind of creative in scotland who's been affected by covid19 and has had their uh kind of income decimated and is, is, is looking for a bit of um continuing professional development so it'll be um uh, there's four five day workshops oh sorry i tell a lie there's three five-day workshops and then for four they've got a day job we've got a... 
into April. <laughs> so, yeah. We missed that bit. Could you say it again, Finlay, just that last bit? All right, the important bit cut out today. <laughs> That's funny. Um, three, three five-day songwriting workshops and one evening class as well, because some people have day jobs. Well, some people are having to get day jobs because they don't have any work. <laughs> Um, yeah. So that's kind of that's the idea of it, um, and we've had a lot of applications, but we're really keen to hear from people who are who are you know, um, er, well, uh, that weird term of early and mid career artists, and it's like, so that's people really want to hear from people who are just starting out actually, um, and it's quite a, a lot of those people might not be confident enough to, to to think that they're right for it, right to apply, but um, we would like them to get in touch even if they don't think it's for them. Um, because it probably is for. <clears throat> and did you say you were offering bursaries for it? Every single place is free. It's all funded by Creative Scotland, so it's completely free. So all that we ask is that people um, lay aside that time uninterrupted to concentrate on the thing. Um, and that's, that's amazing, amazing, actually. And you can so find out. I mean, to go on a week like that, um, you know, like for example, at the Maniac Moor place or an Arvon Centre, would cost you between six and eight hundred pounds, not including your travel. Um, and to do an online course like that would cost sort of between three hundred and six hundred pounds. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good thing. Um, and certainly, like I've been on them myself as a participant in the past, and it has completely changed my kind of attitude, and it really sort of upped what I was able to do. Um, and also, I met loads of people that I've started working with on these kind of things. You know, like Megan Henwood, who I write with, uh, Maz O'Connor, that I write with. Um, these are people that I met on these kind of songwriting retreats. So, in terms of like working with other people, building up all these <coughs> skills, and then also uh, one thing that I get asked to do lots, and I often don't have time to do, it, is teach songwriting workshops. And so we will teach you to teach songwriting workshops as well. Like if you just pay attention, make a few notes, you'll, you should have the skills to do that as well. So it's a pretty useful course um, to anybody. I mean, musicians and, and songwriters would obviously be top, would obviously be top of the bill. But like you know, we could understand that poets and writers might also gain from that. Actors as well. Anyone that's writing songs for shows, anyone that's a, a, a musician that teaches as well, it would be really useful. That's excellent. So birdonawire.info is the website. I put it on the page a few times. So there it is again, swooping in. And uh, watch it's going to swoop out again. <laughs> so I have so much tech. But anyway, Great. Finlay, we're going to listen to you singing uh, a song from one of the world's most famous songwriters, John Martin. This is May You Never, as courtesy of Folk Music Radio. And you said that this song was, uh, you were asked to do a song by someone who's just released a brand new book. Yeah, so he commissioned five of us to do Who? Martin covers. Graham Thompson. Graham Thompson, his name is. It is the music book of the year, this John Martin book he writ with his pen. Um, he also, he's also written a great book about Elvis Costello and Kate Bush as well, if you're interested. But yeah, this is this new one about John Martin. It's an excellent read. Um, but he asked uh, me, Kareen, Blue Rose coach, Vaughn Wilson, and someone whose name escapes me to do um, a cover of a John Martin song because he couldn't do a book tour. Right, well, listen, listen to you singing Me, You, Never. Me, You, Never. And me, you never lay your head down without a hand to hold. And me, you never make your bed out in the cold. You're just like a big strong brother of mine, and you know that I love you true. And you never talk dirty behind my back, and I know that there's those out there who do. Oh, please, oh, won't you, please, oh, won't you bear in mind? Love is a lesson to learn in our time. Won't you, please, won't you bear in mind for me? May you never lay your head down without a hand to hold. May you never make your bed out in the cold You're just like 
like a beautiful sister to me and you know that I love you true and you hold no blades to stab me in my back and I know that there's those out there who do oh please oh, won't you please oh, won't you bear it in mind love is a lesson to learn in our time won't you please won't you bear it in Excellent, great. It's great. Hold on. <laughs> Just like all my audiences. <laughs> right, well, it's time for the hands up for trad quiz. Right, guys, I've got a few sets of questions here that I pulled together in three seconds. And uh, actually, John, you can't really answer the first one. It says, it's, uh, what is the name of John McCusker's first tune book? The Collection. Wrong. Wrong. Which, where did I come, come from? Come on, Mike. Mike. Mike, where did I used to live? The name of the village where I used to live. Starts oh, with the B. I wanted, what's the B? What's the B? Bar Mullah. <laughs> I'd just like to point out. I'd just like to point out to the listener, Simon, that me and Mike McGoldrick have toured together for 30 years <laughs> and he's been to the village. Like, oh, can't hear you, Mike. Mike, are you muted? Are you muted? I'm Mike? muted, and the first thing I said was the Bothwell boy. Ah, oh, oh, correct! Oh, 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 That's the first thing I said. All right. <laughs> right. Next question. Who starred in the 1990 film Bird on a Wire? Uh, someone mad is in it. Like, uh, is there River Phoenix in it? No. Well, maybe. But uh, who are the two main stars? I don't know. I looked it up the other day, actually, and I've forgotten. I can... It, oh, no. It's Mel Gibson and Goldie Hawn. Okay. And for a bonus question, what's the name of the film where Mel Gibson painted his face blue and shouted freedom really loudly? <laughs> well done, Jen. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a Scottish joke, isn't it? What do you call a woman with a yellow glove on? Goldie Hawn. <laughs> yeah. Question three on that note Which Nairn fiddler turned 30 in the last week? Mike Vass? Gray McKenzie. Ali Bain. I might have got Nairn wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Wilkie. Oh. Ten. Happy birthday, Laura. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you have got that right if I'd got the place right, Jen? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Laura Wilkie. Right, what was the name of John Doyle's band Solace's first album produced by fiddler Johnny Cunningham? Is that the words uh, that remain? Yeah. Mm. Was it before then? I love this album. Is it, it wasn't no. called Phil Flight, was it? Uh, nope. Um... Uh, Sunny spells. That's the right, correct, Jen. Sunny spells. Sunny Sunny spells. Was, it was that the That's first what one? I thought too. I thought that was the second one too, Jen. Yeah. I think yeah, Sunny yeah. Spells is the second one, isn't it? No, I think that's the first oh. one. Oh. Is it really? Mm -hmm. So what's the one with them all on the front cover, like in little squares? Looking really young. Yeah. <laughs> no, the the first one I think has got them all in a session in New York, isn't it? And John, ah, I like yeah. the yeah, that's the one. Sunny well, Spells and Scarlet Shards is the one with all that great photo with Karen in the front. and. Okay, that might be the first one. Then, I think that is the first one, actually. And of course, we, all think, we all think that you're wrong, Simon, <laughs> on this. Like, every single one of us and all the listeners at home. Well, let's be honest, it won't be, won't be the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, I don't think it is. Sunny Spells and Scatter Shares is not... The right, we'll stop right talking about this now, Finley. <laughs> 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 the 
this is what Simon does when he's wrong. He just goes on to the next question. <laughs> Puts his listeners off. I just have a quick hello to Claire Hastings, who actually got the question hello. right with Laura Wilkie. Jen. <laughs> Um, right, um, right. Final question. It's an adding question. Add the number of Christmas Christmas at home tour dates, plus the trans online event, plus birds on a wire retreats. Uh, Thirty-four. Wrong. Twenty-six. Close. 107. 25. 24. Ah, in between. 19 Chris at home. Solus's debut album is called Solus. <laughs> Have you look at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you do oh, go on. <laughs> I think you'll find Simon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to have to go and look that up. <laughs> Let's add up if you can think of the number of times that Simon Toomer hasn't done his research and he's been wrong through an entire interview. <laughs> Let's add up the number of times Simon's wrote the quiz at 25 past one when everyone's about to come on. <laughs> well, guys. Yeah, well, it all goes wrong, though, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for coming on today, guys. That was really good fun. Okay, and fun, uh, definitely, what what is the address for finding out? It's. Um, it's uh, myplayer.uk forward slash Christmas at home for the tour. Birds on a wire. Dot info with Goldie Hawn. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. So David Hood has just asked before we go. Saw that Finlay was doing some songwriting taster sessions. Will he or anyone be doing the same for trad guitar lessons? I'm sure there must Jen. be. Jen! I have a Patreon. Yeah, I have a Patreon Jen. page. Come and join me. <clears throat> and Jen, do Patreon page. Stuff. I'm rubbish. Jen is fantastic. <laughs> I've got it all set up. Excellent. Right, well, great, guys. Um, Brilliant. I'll see you later. Thanks very much for watching, everybody.